Hey guys, Brian Beeler here. We're back in the lab with another review that we're working on. Now this one's a little bit different. There's a hundred different ways to boot a server. You could use a SATA DOM, you could use SD cards, you could use network boot, you could do all sorts of things. A lot of people use the old fashioned SSD boot, but the problem is, is enterprise SSDs tend to be pretty expensive. And when you dedicate one of those just to boot, you're gonna maybe give up a drive bay, which is not good, especially for expensive NVMe servers when you have all those bays across the front, or you've got to make some other compromises. So Kingston's come through and they've designed this. This is the DC-1000B. This is their latest effort. It's an M.2 SSD, as we can see, NVMe interface, and it's designed specifically for boot duties. What does that mean? Well, the drive's optimized for those workloads. It's NVMe, so it still has a real nice performance profile, but it comes in smaller capacities, 240 gig and 480 gig that are a little more cost effective. And it comes with power loss protection, which is something that not even most enterprise drives have in this category. So it's a great replacement for typical boot duties. And it's a heads and shoulders ahead of where client drives are, which find themselves doing this job sometimes. So let's take a closer look at the components and capabilities of this drive. So as we take a closer look at the drive, as noted, it's an M.2 form factor 2280. That means 22 millimeters wide, 80 millimeters long. The M.2 is important because now we can put this on the board. Most modern server boards have an M.2 slot, or we could put it into a PCI adapter and use one of the expansion card slots in the back. The other part, of course, is the NVMe part. And that's important from a performance and capability standpoint. So it's great if we're gonna run ESXi or Windows or whatever as the, uh, as the boot for this drive. But if we're gonna have access to NVMe type performance, you can do a little bit more if you wanna get fancy. You can handle logging really easily or maybe even a little bit of caching with a drive like this. As noted, we won't give up any drive bays in the front. And that's really important as we think about the cost associated with high capacity NVMe drive servers that might run 24 or 25 bays across the front. We don't really want to lose one of those for boot. As we take a closer look at the PCB, we can see we've got the power loss protection modules on the side there, the NAND packs in the middle, and a DRAM pack on the far side. Flipping it over behind the sticker, it's really mirrored. There's more power loss protection, NAND, the controller, and another RAM module. In terms of performance, Kingston quotes the DC-1000B, our 480 gig version, to do 3200 megabytes per second sequential read and 565 megabytes per second of sequential write. For this kind of job, we're really not worried about having balanced performance. We don't need big write performance. Once we boot the system and write the logs and the other standard activity, there's not going to be a big draw there. If we look at steady state 4K IOPS, we're looking at 205,000 read and 20,000 write. One of the other things that's important though is that the drive comes with a decent amount of endurance. It's a 0.5 drive write per day over the warranted five year uh, period that Kingston offers. So in terms of what we can do, we're gonna still get decent drive writes, decent endurance out of this drive in addition to the power that we have from the NVMe interface and the performance capabilities there. And just to reinforce one more thing, this is TLC NAND. It's been around forever and is well suited for this task. So we're going to go ahead and get this drive in our server, get testing and see how it looks. Okay, so as we take a look at performance, we've pulled forward the uh, key synthetic workloads and out of the gate, yeah, the charts are a touch on the Spartan side. We just have the DC-1000B on these charts, frankly, because we just don't have a adequate competitor. If we threw SATA drives on here, this would look ridiculous. And if we used any of the small, real small capacity NVMe drives, it doesn't make sense. You know, those would be good enough for an ESXi boot, but for full Windows install or heavier Linux builds with logging. There's there's just not really a great comparison, at least not that we have in the lab. There are other drives out there that would be similar, uh, but even those, uh, Intel makes one, uh, they don't have, uh, in some cases, power loss protection. So the Kingston drive really is unique in this space. So as we take a look at uh, 4K random read, 
And what we see is the drive does really well, stays right around 100 microseconds and stays low until it uh, peaks out at about 207,000 IOPS with a latency a little bit over 600 microseconds. So for a read-centric drive, that's what it's tuned for. Uh, we see you know, a nice peak up here and, and does really well. Now it's not a write-centric drive, but we always look at these things anyway. And when we look at 4K random write, we see the latency hangs down under 200 uh, microseconds for quite a while and peaks at about 115,000 IOPS at 1.1 milliseconds. So again, even though it's not designed for write activities, it actually did pretty well there uh, and stayed you know, until this little hump right here you know, stayed uh, pretty well in control to you know, over 90,000 IOPS at that point. If we switch over to sequential read, we can see the drive peaks at about 31,700 IOPS. Uh, in terms of megabytes per second, we're talking about about two gigabytes per second uh, with a latency of around 500 microseconds. So again, Kingston designed this for read. It seems like it's doing really well across the board on the read side. As we take a look at uh, sequential write 64K, uh, we see, let's see, we've got sub-millisecond latency until about 7,000 IOPS, and uh, that's about 430 megabytes per second, with a peak of about 500 megasecond at 2 milliseconds. So that one's pretty close to spec sheet. Now, our numbers never align with spec sheets, or rarely do. Uh, because our testing methodology, just, uh, methodology is just a little different than uh, whatever the vendor uses for their specs. In our full text review, we also did the VDI workload. So if you're interested in that, uh, you can check out the, the link in the YouTube description and see that full part of the review. One other note, too, though, is, is pricing. So when we think about server boot, uh, a lot of times we'll see SATA drives use theirs, SATA DOMs, uh, SD cards, network boot, all sorts of other things. Uh, the, this drive at the 240 gig, just looking on Amazon street price, we're at like 97 bucks. The, two, the uh, 480 is, uh, is, is 140, I think, 145. So from a pricing standpoint, you're gonna get power loss protection, you're gonna get NVMe, so you get that nice read performance, which lets you do more with the drive than just use it for only boot. And, uh, you know, it's a Kingston product, and they've got a, a history of providing quality drives. So there's a lot to like about this. I'm going to be honest, the, the server boot drive category is not the most sexy of all the things that we look at. But Kingston's got a really competent product here. So we're happy with it. I think it'll do well for uh, its intended purpose. So that's all for now. I appreciate the support on YouTube, and we'll be back soon with more videos. Thanks.